What's up everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Evan Phoenix and today we are going to be talking about how I was able to purchase a rental property at the age of 22 years old while still in college and without having to use a bank. Yeah, so in this video I'm going to be talking about why real estate, why I chose to stick with it, how I even got into it, how I was able to purchase property with absolutely zero money from a bank while still in college. And at the very end of this video, I will be going over all the numbers with this property. So make sure to stick around for that. To clear the air real quick, no, I am not rich. I was not born rich in a rich family or anything like that. This was 100% funded by me. And my parents did not help me at all. Um, my parents don't even know that I bought a property. So please, please don't tell them. <laughs> Seriously, don't, don't tell them. So before we get into this video, make sure to go down and hit the like button, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you know every single time I post. I will be posting weekly here. I'm very excited about it to start my YouTube journey. It just helps a lot when you go down and like and subscribe for pushing my video out as being a new YouTube channel. So please go ahead and take a second to do that and let's get right into it. Oh, did you go down and like and subscribe already? Okay, cool. Sorry about that. Let's, let's get right into it right now. So how did I get into real estate investing? Well, about two years ago, right? I was on Instagram. Yes, Instagram, social media. I was scrolling through it and I clicked on a story. It was one of my buddies. I knew of him. Uh, we weren't really close, but we had talked multiple times and he had a threeplex. For those of you that don't know, a threeplex is a building, a home with three units in it. So he lived in one of the units and rented out the other two. Well, the two units, the two tenants in the units paid down his mortgage. So it covered the mortgage and paid him even more. So every month he would cash flow a couple hundred bucks. So by living there, he had a free place to live and he gained money every single month. That is the power of house hacking. Long story short, I reached out to him and I said, hey, like, what is this? How do you even get into something like this? Where can I educate myself on this topic? And him being the nice guy he is, he sent back a bunch of people to listen to, books to read and everything. A couple of those would be Brandon Turner of Bigger Pockets, David Green of Bigger Pockets, Graham Stevens, and Meet Kevin. And the one book he actually recommended me read was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I know some people might be laughing behind the screen because everyone and their mothers read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. But honestly, after reading that book, I was completely hooked on real estate investing and just earning passive income, trying to get to financial freedom. And for those of you who have not read Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, please go look it up after this video, of course. Don't end the video now, but go look up that book and read it because it's going to change your life. So about two years, I have been educating myself on every podcast I could, reading as many books as I could, trying to save up as much as I could, trying to find my first deal. And to me, I know it wasn't when I was going to fund my first deal. It was going to be how was I going to fund my first deal? I'm a college student. I don't have a full-time job. And how am I going to support myself and purchase a property, which usually you don't purchase until you're out of school. After about a year of educating myself, I found out the term seller financing, owner financing, land contract, whatever you will. One of those three, they all mean the same thing. And that day I found the way I was going to purchase my first property. So I bought my property using seller financing. Seller financing is a real estate agreement in which the seller handles the mortgage process instead of a financial institution, AKA the bank, instead of applying for a conventional bank loan, the buyer signs a mortgage with the seller. So basically what that means is instead of going to a bank to get a mortgage and get a loan, the seller will actually carry out the loan. So you will pay the seller a down payment as well as monthly payments for the agreed amount terms. Along with seller financing is usually a balloon payment. A balloon payment is pretty much the remaining sum of what you owe. You'll just give it all in full on the agreed amount date. So usually five years in, 10 years in, 15 years in, there's a balloon payment of the remaining sum. So on that date, you'll just pay the remaining out full by refinancing the property from a bank and transition into a bank loan. 
Now for the buyer, there is a lot of benefits of going into a seller financing deal with little risk. Pretty much the only risk you have is what you put into the property. For example, let's just say you get into a seller financing deal and you have seven grand into the whole entire deal and you have the property. Well, let's just say three months in, both the tenants leave on a duplex, uh, the tree falls down, hits the roof, damages it, you gotta replace that, foundation crack, everything goes wrong and you can't afford any of it. Well, guess what? You just give the property back to the seller. Opposed to if you got actually a conventional loan or an FHA loan, you'd have to keep the property even though all these terrible things have just happened to your property. Well, whereas seller financing, you have an exit plan. One tip that I wanted to offer is if you get into a seller financing negotiation, find out what the seller's motivation is and what they want out of the deal. And then once you find that out, offer three offers. So for example, he wanted $69,000, 10% down on a 15 year note and refinanced at 10 years. What I offered him was three different offers and none of them were, was what he wanted. So the first offer was $69,000, 5% down on a 20 year note and refinanced at 10 years. The second offer was $67,000, 7% down on a 20 year note and refinanced at 10. The third offer was actually the one that we agreed upon was $67,000, $6,500 down plus closing costs on a 20 year note and refinanced at five years. Balloon payment at five years. The reason why he took that offer is because it was the best appealing to him and it was closest to what he wanted. Now, if I were to just offer him the $67,000, $6,500 down plus closing costs on a 20 year note and refinanced at five years, he might've said no. But since I gave him his options, he was able to see $67,000 was only $2,000 off of what he was asking $6,500 down is pretty much 10% plus closing costs. That's about 10% on a 20 year note, only five years more than what he wanted. And then refinance at five years, meaning he gets his large sum of money faster. So when going into a seller financing deal, that is my tip to offer more than one offer. Now, speaking of all these numbers, how about we get into the last part of this video and talk about the numbers. Okay, to the fun part of the video, now we're going to discuss the numbers of this property, see if it cash flows, see if it's doing well. Um, we're going to go over that right now, and I guess you guys can be the judge. So I purchased this property for $67,000 with a down payment of $6,500. The loan is $60,500 at 5.5% over 25 years, which I thought was very fair. It comes out to be roughly $372 a month. We also discussed a balloon payment at five years. It's gonna come out to be $53,000, I believe, somewhere around $50,000. Okay, for the monthly payments, I'm first gonna tell you how much each unit is actually bringing in. The top unit is bringing in $575 a month, and the bottom is bringing $545 a month. The reason that this deal seemed really intriguing for me, and I thought it was a value-add property, because the market rent for a two-bed, one-bath in the area, which both of my units are, two-bedroom, one-bath, are $625. The reason that they are so low in this property is because I inherited the tenants from the seller, and one of the bottom unit seller that is paying $645 a month has been there for six years. Yes, six years. And he only raised the payment one time for him. So I mean, I understand that I guess if he's a quality tenant, then you'd rather have him than raising the price and getting a sketchier tenant. But I believe that we can go in there and fix that up and get it higher. But for right now in these numbers, I'm just gonna include what they are right now. So 575 and 545 bring in a total of $1,120 a month. Now for my expenses, I have to pay $372 each month to the seller. For taxes, I have to pay $170 a month insurance $45 a month, water, sewer, and trash $45 a month. Now you all might be saying that that water, sewer, and trash bill is too low, but I'm gonna be showing you right now the water bill I just received for the past three months came out to be $128. In order to be a landlord, you have to have a rental license, which is $80 a year. I just divided that by 12, comes out to be $7 a month. 
So if we take the revenue, which is $1,120 from the two rentals, subtract it by the expenses monthly, which is $639, it will be roughly $481 of cash flow every single month. Now you might be saying, hey, what about the vacancy, repairs, maintenance? Bigger Pocket says you're supposed to put 15% aside for that subtracted from your cash flow. Well, let me tell you something. I'm actually putting all $481 per month back into a bank account set up for this property so that it can accumulate over time. My end goal is to actually go in before the refinance, fix up the whole property, get tenants in there that paying a lot more, and then I can get the appraisal much higher. That way, when it comes down to refinancing the property, I might not even have to put any of my own money into the deal. So let me give you this example real quick. So let's say I have $481 coming in each month, but let's just say 350 I'm gonna keep, the rest is gonna end up going to maintenance, uh, you know, everyday repairs. So let's say $350 a month times 12 is about 5,000, let's just say $5,000 a year, right? So times that by two, two years, I'll have The amount of money I have into this deal is $8,570. When you do the math, it ends up being a 49% cash on cash return, which is absolutely ridiculous. Real estate is such a powerful tool and is what I'm gonna be using to hopefully get me to financial freedom. And I would encourage anyone else to start, to start educating yourself, whatever that may be. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to this channel. I have a lot more coming out. So please just go down there, like and subscribe. Also, I want you guys to comment, what was your first deal, how did it turn out, and where are you now on your real estate investment journey? I really appreciate you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.